Now then it's time for a perspective on the programme for you. And as we've been saying over the last couple of hours here on France 24, by now we should, a long time ago, have had the results of the Iowa caucus. Still not got those results. Uh, they've been delayed until daytime USA now, while manual checks are carried out on the, the results after some inconsistencies were found. But with me here on set is Lex Paulson, who's a supporter of the American Abroad for, for uh, Mayor Pete, supporting the candidacy then of Pete Buttigieg for the nomination. Lex is also uh, founding director of the UM6P School of Collective Intelligence and a lecturer in rhetoric and political theory at Sciences Po University in Paris. In the past, he's also been a former Democratic candidate for the Connecticut General Assembly, a 2008 Obama presidential campaign organiser, also been involved in the campaign for Emmanuel Macron as well. That's a long introduction. <laughs> Thanks very much for being very with us. to be here. Program. First of all, let's talk about your guy then, um, Peter Buttigieg. I mean, uh, he came out pretty confident, didn't he? He seemed as though he thought he'd uh, won the whole thing almost when he started speaking after the uh, after the, uh, the results didn't come in, if you like. Oh, indeed, yeah. I mean, our campaign has been on the ground for months. So what you have to understand about the Iowa caucuses is, is that there's an intense training and recruitment process so that the campaign itself on caucus night has its own sources of information. Uh, uh, what I understand is that about 77% uh, of the precincts in, uh, in Iowa uh, reported back uh, to the campaign as of about midnight last night America time, and that... Uh, we're in a very strong position, strong enough that Mayor Pete went on stage and said that he's going to New Hampshire victorious. I mean, he's one of those candidates uh, who some of us who perhaps aren't interested or not interested, don't know so much about U.S. politics, perhaps haven't followed in the past. I mean, he seems to have sort of come up from from nowhere. Uh, he's got a very interesting mix uh, of experience. Uh, he's a former Navy intelligence officer who served in Afghanistan, a uh, Rhodes Scholar, a uh, brilliant mind, and a mayor of a mid-sized uh, Midwestern town, someone who's had to solve practical problems. As they say, there's no Republican or Democratic way of picking up the garbage. So if you want someone with a complex understanding of world affairs, but also a pragmatic sense of how to get things done and a, and a generational vision of, of how we can move beyond some of the debates of the past, um, Mayor Pete has turned out to be a very uh, inspirational candidate. Is he going to be the man to um, take on Donald Trump, do you think? Look, I'm very happy to support Mayor Pete, and I would be very happy to support other candidates as well. But I think there are three different theories of how we beat Donald Trump. One is we return to the status quo. That's the Biden argument. The second is we go as much to a radical uh, point of uh, opposition point, which is the, the Bernie Sanders argument. There's a third point of view, which is that, in fact, we need to reconstruct a new coalition and be thinking differently about problems like climate change, like health care, in a way that can speak to a lot of disaffected uh, forces former Republicans, Democrats, et cetera. That's Mayor Pete's argument. That's why I think he's going to be our nominee. It's difficult for the Democrats, though, though. I mean, you just highlighted there yourself three different possible options. How on earth do the Democrats come around whichever candidate is selected in the end? Uh, well, uh, we have a long primary process. Uh, in France and the UK, you have uh, relatively civilized, short six or seven week campaigns. In the US, uh, many months will go by before maybe before we know who our, our nominee is. I think there's going to be enough time for Democratic voters to get to know these candidates a little bit better. New Hampshire has a tradition. You don't vote for a candidate until he's been three times in your living room. Um, and so uh, there is enough time, I think, for Mayor Pete and the other candidates to really have to make their uh, case to the voters directly face to face. And what about the whole process? I mean, it's the third time now that I've begun the process of covering a US election here for France 24. But as you say, I mean, it does seem to go on, doesn't it, for, for months, nay, years, really. I mean, is it, is it really the most sensible way of electing someone, particularly the, the amount of money that gets uh, used as well in, this, in these uh, caucuses and the eventual election? One of the things you learn in living in in Europe is that Americans have very funny, antiquated ideas about how to do politics. And all you have to just make a, a very quick look at American political institutions to see that at the national level, we have some very deep reconstruction of our politics to do, from the case of money, the Electoral College, uh, the Senate, et cetera. France actually has shown that by bringing citizens together in new ways, like citizens' assemblies uh, and collective intelligence methods and dialogues, the things that my partners and I at SIAM uh, are doing every day, these are the kind of ways that France could be teaching America how to do its politics better. And we also had a caucus here in Paris last night, didn't we, that you uh, were involved in? We did as well. I was at the Mairie de Deuxième. We had 17 Iowa voters um, who were, came as far away from Geneva, Italy, uh, uh, London to Paris. Um, there were some a little bit of uh, 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 signs that this was not going to be a smooth night. Uh, <laughs> there were people who came late because the time had been uh, misidentified. So, But in the end, it was a, a very uh, uh, friendly process. And uh, Elizabeth Warren ended up winning the, uh, the, the group here. Here, Mayor Pete, we had a strong showing, and it showed that even Americans abroad have a chance to participate this year in this very important election. 
seemed to go well then, um, unlike the actual caucus itself. I mean, the Republicans picking up on it already, the Trump campaign saying this caucus mess is the sloppiest train wreck in history. It's not a good start for the Democrats, is it? Well, we had, uh, you know, something like 180,000 Democrats who came out to participate in this process. Uh, yes, it might take a little while to, to report, but I do think that uh, the Democratic Party has a lot of energy on the ground this year. It's what we've seen here in Paris, uh, uh, not just Democrats, but Americans of all different kinds of uh, political beliefs coming out and saying this election is too important to sit on the sidelines. So, yes, I think the Iowa caucus will turn out to be perhaps the last uh, of its kind. There's no way that this will uh, be allowed to happen uh, another time. But the Democrats this year are determined that Trump cannot be reelected uh, and that the seven to nine million Americans abroad will also take part in this process to make sure we have a new president in 2020. Final election, but they still can't organize the uh, caucus properly. Well, um, we couldn't report the caucus properly, uh, and there's no excusing uh, that sometimes when you don't need an app, uh, you shouldn't create an app. Uh, this is what they, uh, the Iowa Democratic Party had to learn the hard way. Okay. And uh, I mean, obviously, this is uh, being seen by everyone. It's seen by the media. It's seen by uh, all those political commentators as the first, like, taste, if you like, the first uh, indication of how it's going to go. And it really is vital for the candidates, isn't it, to put on a good showing. It is vital. And I think uh, what you'll see is that Joe Biden, from very early indications, seemed to have uh, has done worse uh, than, than he was hoping. Um, I think Mayor Pete, Bernie Sanders maybe have done a bit better. I think it testifies to the importance of getting organized on the ground. Um, just having a well-known name is not going to carry you through. I think Michael Bloomberg is going to find that out the hard way. Um, but we have a couple more hours to know what the actual results are. But I think uh, uh, Mayor Pete's team, uh, we have reasons to be confident. And just finally, you mentioned Bernie Sanders there. I mean, obviously, he's gone through this process once before with Hillary Clinton uh, only a few years back. I mean, it, it seems almost strange and unusual that he's going through the process again when people were even criticizing him for being too elderly last time around. Um, yes, and Bernie Sanders has an important voice in the party. I think he talks very convincingly about corruption, about the need to reform um, our capitalist system. So Bernie Sanders has brought some very important ideas to the party. Um, is he going to be the best uh, standard bearer for the Democratic Party in 2020? I don't think so, but um, there are certainly a lot of Americans who want a very, very big change from this president. Good to have you with us on the programme today, Lex Paulson. We shall see, of course, uh, when those results eventually do come in, exactly uh, how your candidate and how the rest of the candidates have uh, done as well. Thanks Good to be with you. Coming in and uh, talking to us on Live from Paris today.